hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, we'll be going over one of the most popular and powerful exotic builds in game, and that is the Void Heart of Imus Light setup. A heart has been one of the strongest exotics that allowed Titan players to enhance their ability, regen, and strength, all by using your abilities like normal. And this here allows players the freedom to build into exotic however they like, with no consequences. Although this effect has been nerfed, it's still as viable as ever. And with the right subclass choice, you can make this build last for pretty much ever. So let me show you an ideal build that you can use for every new season with little change required. To start, you're going to want to have controlled demolition where avoid abilities of any type or volatile explosions make the target volatile. Defeating said volatile targets grants health to you and allies. Then you want offensive bulwark where upon having an overshield, your grenades charge faster, you have increased melee range and damage, and melee final blows extend the duration of overshields. The subclass effects will focus on providing users a best of both worlds setup for both damage and survival. This here will not only make you strong enough to solo most content, but also increase your survival chances on the higher difficulty, and thus be flexible in whatever content you choose. The fragments used are Echo of Undermining, where Void Grenades now apply a 15% debuff to targets, Echo of Exchange, where mini final blows grant grenade energy. Echo Provision, where damaging targets with grenades grant mini energy. And Echo Instability, where defeating targets with grenades grant volatile rounds. To make use of half in most light effect, it will require you to use all your abilities one after another to support the whole build from start to finish. You can just build into stats alone if you wish, but not everyone has the best armor stats to achieve that. So, Having Echo of Exchange and Provision is a must if you really want the quick way to access your abilities. Undermining is of course a must as well for the build, even with the debuff applied to it. And I would also advise you to have the Sticky Grenade as this alone will hit twice, but it will also affect Echo Provision effect for twice the benefit. Instability can be taken off the season since Volatile Flow is accessible, but once this is gone, then the following fragment will be helpful with giving you back-to-back -back healing as long as you get the kill and trigger CD's effect. These are the ideal fragments to have if you want the best for the exotic and build as a whole. For the mods and stat section, as we are using Heart of Imus Light and this effect does enhance the region speed of our other abilities, all we need to do is build into one or two key given stats that you'll be using a lot and then build into the weak stat after. Resilience, Discipline and Strength will all be used in between each other and with the effect of Echo Provision and Exchange affect our Strength and Discipline stat as well, our stats don't need to be maxed out for maximum effect. Discipline will help with debuffing targets as a whole, but also getting our mini energy back, so this will need to be at tier 8 to 10 for the best benefits. Along with Offensive Bulwark effect and Fragments applied, Grenade Kickstart and Distribution will help with getting our abilities back fast on top of what we currently have. For your resilience, this should be the same as your discipline at tier 8 or more, as you will be using this heavily to benefit from the exotic effect, but also get a good amount of damage reduction in the process. Nothing specific is required here, as distribution is all you need here, but if you want to have a faster discipline cooldown rate, then I would advise you to look into the Bastion effect just for that effect alone. Now for armor charge mods, having charged up times 2 is a must for the extra armor charge slot it will provide. I would then also advise you to look into having the Harmonic Reserve mod for increasing all Void Weapons ammo reserves. This will be helpful for sustaining more ammo for longer when using our heavy of choice, which is the Two-Tailed Fox, which with the Reserve mod should give us around 8 rockets instead of 7. To support the armor charges, having the Void Siphon, a firepower mod, will give you the most simplest way of creating armor charges outside of what is currently available. This will be needed as the Void Surge mod times 2 will be used to increase our Void Weapon damage by an extra 17% as a whole, and if we want to sustain this for long, then we need to make sure our Void Weapon is putting in work. Don't forget that the Time Dilation mod will also help with making the Surge mod last a bit longer than normal when not using our grenades, and thus will make our Void Cypher mod work into overtime just for us. Now, lastly for the weapons, you have a lot of room to pick here in terms of secondary and heavy being used. I recommend a weapon that has repulsive brace on it, so you can benefit from the extra protection, but also trigger offensive bulwarks effect as well. 
A good weapon for this is the Velas X from last season, which is an amazing PvE Roy Pulse weapon that most people should have gotten. It rolls with the given perk as mentioned, but also comes with two damaging perks, with Golden Tricon being the best with offering you a base 15% on kills, then a 50% buff on ability kills. Imagine this with the following build that its ability heavy base means that you can get a constant overshield and damage buff if propped correctly and sustained. This is great for base content alone, and then when applied to an end game, it makes the setup even more better than before. Of course, any weapon with the RB perk is fine to use here, even a void weapon with Pugless or Demo is a good alternative if you are limited on weapon rolls currently. After that, we have the Heavy, which is flexible for the users in terms of what best fits the role and what for activity. I have found that the Two Tail Fox is a great weapon to have, as its damage alone is a lot more better than before, and its ability to apply suppression and solitic damage over time is great when up against mini bosses to bosses in general. On top of that, the weapon has got a new catalyst, which now gives the weapon a third rocket, which is arc, and can also jolt. So it's going to be doing even more crazier damage on top of what it does. And if you want to go overkill with it, you could also apply the volatile flow seasonal mod to it, so that your void rocket applies volatile rounds as well. Considering how powerful this rocket launcher is, and since bricks from beyond can drop more heavy ammo for us when using void weapons alone. This overall means we can deal a lot of damage against GM bosses and still have plenty of rockets left over for later. With the nerf to Heart of Image Light region effect, I haven't seen a lot of players use the following exotic compared to the many other seasons it was super popular in. This could be for a number of reasons, but if you personally think that Heart is now not as good as it was before, then you're quite wrong. The build is like many other versions you have seen in the past, but instead of using the stats and exotic at hand, we now have to build into the fragments as well for that extra push. Thankfully, the fragments being used don't come with a lot of downsides to them, and since the new build crafting system has been thoroughly updated for us to get what we need fast, it's even more better than it's ever been before. The survivability, damage and flexibility of the setup allows players to freely enjoy whatever content they like without needing to have a specific weapon or mod available to make the setup work. The only thing in the build that is needed to make it work is the exotic itself, as outside of that, you can put on whatever armor, mods, and fragments, and weapons you generally like. This overall is a good thing for the new and returning players, you want a build that is quick and easy to use, but can also put in its weight if you want to test out the higher end game content. It doesn't have much of a weakness to talk about, as its ability region falls in line with what we are already familiar with and accessibility as mentioned is there. Perhaps a higher stat level for resilience and discipline may be required for better benefits, but this isn't really needed unless you have the slots to do so. Overall, a splendid build that covers pretty much all content in game and can be relied on from start to finish with little effort involved. But of course, what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below but at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and sub out here. I will leave a dim link for the build below and if you want more stuff like this then I have players available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, I hope to see you again soon.